Okay, so let's take a look and introduce just the topic of multiple reactions. This is moving on to the next section in the course. And we're going to spend a, a few classes actually on multiple reactions. So tonight's class introduces the idea of multiple reactions. It's essentially a recap of chemistry ideas. So I, I like to spend a bit of time recapping concepts that although we should know, we don't always remember off the top of our heads. So let's go through that first and then for the next five or six classes we're going to get fairly in depth into the topic of multiple reactions. maximize the desired product. So let's just put that there as, as a key point. Success of the chemical plant is its ability to maximize production of the desirable product. If we're getting side reactions occurring that deplete our desired product, or if we have other reactions occurring that take our raw material to other undesirable products, <coughs> then we're ending up not with the reactor design problem, but then with the separation problem. So most chemical plants, if you step back at a very high level, you'll see reactions occurring in one or more reaction vessels followed by a fairly discrete number of units of separators. So we'll learn about this in 4M, but this cost over here is often about 80% of your chemical process capital cost is due to separations and often your energy cost. This upfront step over here can be quite low. So if we can, we really want in our reaction step to produce our desired product and that's it and not have the separation step down here. We will use this terminology here that we'll get products D, our desired products. So D, capital D, will be the notation I'll use for desired and we'll use low, uh, capital case U for undesired. So our aim is up front in our reaction step, if I take my raw materials, <coughs> so we've always kind of called our raw material A or A and B, I'd like to take my raw material and make sure that if at this step over here, leaving my reactor, I get a lot of desired product and minimize my undesired product, then I don't need to spend so much money downstream. So you'll see that simply choosing a, a reactor, whether it's batch or CSTR or plug flow, you can actually create quite a big difference in your choice of reactor, even up here. It plays a big role in how much desired product you produce. So not only is it things like reaction temperature that plays a role, it's also the choice of reactor that you, you make early on can have a substantial substantial effect. So let's uh, introduce a little bit of terminology here then. For multiple reactions we get we get four types. 
parallel reactions. So this is when I've got A going to a desired product with a certain reaction rate, and then added with a different reaction rate, K, let's call this KD and KU. So with a different reaction rate, I'll perform undesired. So these two are occurring in parallel. Clearly, I'd like to minimize my production of undesired product. Can I change things so that KU, that reaction rate constant for the unwanted side reaction, is reduced in some way? We'll, we'll see that in the next class tomorrow. So that's a parallel reaction. There's also the series reaction. Reactions, I should say. We have got A plus B. <coughs> might go to my desired product, D, at a certain reaction rate, KD. But then that product, D, might, in the same reactor, decompose to an undesired isomer, for example, or some other species it decomposes to U. So that's a series type reaction. type is a set of multiple reactions that typically occur when we're dealing with crude oil and petroleum refineries. We call these independent reactions. So this is A goes to B plus C, for example, and D plus E goes to F plus G. These are both are occurring independently of each other. So they're typical in crude oil. Processing units. And then the final set of multiple reactions that we consider are what are called complex reactions. So I've used an example in a prior class um, of complex reactions where we had three radicals. But this is uh, typically something along the lines where you see something really messy with multiple reaction steps. A plus B, for example, goes to C plus E. And A plus C reacts and forms, forms uh, So A, your A raw material reacts with one of the products over here and forms another species F. And F might go on and form another species G. So we've got A really competing for, uh, A is being competed for by species B and C and forming these other products. So it's a multiple steps of reaction. So these are the four ma major classes of multiple reactions we consider. And just to give you, just to introduce the topic then of of reactor types, let's consider this one particular number we're going to use a lot. It's called selectivity. So this is another definition that we need to be using quite frequently. And I'm going to introduce it in the context of an example of, of parallel reactions. So I've got A being depleted, sorry, A reacting and forming our desired product D, and I've got A reacting with a different rate constant KU to form our undesired species. And let's put some numbers, oh, sorry, let's put some structure to this. Let me say the rate of reaction of A, or in other words, the rate of formation of D. Both of those are equivalent statements is equal to KD, the desired rate constant, CA to the alpha 1. So we don't know the reaction order. We're just using a variable there, alpha 1, for it to represent it. So my rate of formation of D is the same as the rate of depletion of minus RA. 
Well, this is just be a little bit more careful here because minus RA is actually the total rate of, of depletion of A. So let me say minus rate of A from the desired reaction. And then RA from the undesired reaction gets depleted. That's equal to the rate of formation of the undesired species is equal to KU, rate constant there, CA to the alpha 2. So let's consider, uh, we're not specifying whether they're first order, <coughs> second order, they're in a different order with different rate constants. And so we can then write minus RA net to the net rate of reaction of A is the sum of those two, RD plus RU. So A gets depleted by two mechanisms, the desired mechanism and the undesired mechanism. Now, this is nothing new to us. What is new is this definition of selectivity. So S, D over U is the notation we'll use. So capital S, <coughs> D over U. We will interpret that term as the selectivity of D with respect to U. Okay, so that's how you read that notation. Selectivity of D with respect to U. And let me just make another note here. We'll also emphasize that this is the instantaneous selectivity. And the reason why we call this instantaneous selectivity is because we define it as S D over U is the reaction rate of formation of D over the rate of formation of U. This is the key equation here, right. definition. How fast am I forming D, moles per meter cubed per unit time, over how fast am I forming my undesired reaction? Or my undesired species, I should say. Also in moles per meter cubed per time. So both units are the same from the numerator and denominator. Cancel out gives you a dimensionless number of selectivity. So let's make a third note here. This is dimensionless. And the final point that should be clear is we want to maximize that selectivity. We want to make sure that the rate at which I form D exceeds the rate at which I form U. And I want to maximize the ratio of the two rates. So using that definition then, let's sub in what we, what we have here for our rates. And we'll get to, actually with very little work, very quickly, in no more than 15, 20 minutes, we'll actually quite clearly be able to tell which reactor we should use without even designing it. Without even modeling it and using reaction rate uh, design equations, we can quickly see which reactor we should be using. So let's sum in here, S, D over U, is the rate of formation of D over the rate of formation of U. If I sub in the rate constants there, it's KD over KU, CA to the alpha 1 minus alpha 2. And remember, we want to maximize this guy. How do you maximize it? <coughs> Lower KU. Lower alpha two. Sorry? Lower alpha two. Lower alpha two. Other suggestions? Alpha increase alpha one. Increase the increase KD. 
Um, if you're all focusing on everything except CA, CA is the easiest. We cannot actually change alpha 1 and alpha 2. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 are fixed. They are the powers in the rate constants. So this reaction, we can't change it from being a first order to a second order system. That's fixed. So we really cannot manipulate the alphas. KD and KU, can you change those? Absolutely. If I change the temperature, KD changes. KU will change. Okay? But most so, likely they change in the same direction, right? Most likely they change in the same direction. But is it, do they change at the same rates in the same direction? Okay, so that's, that's the key thing. So we'll look at that tomorrow. But what we will quickly just look at is the effect of CA. CA is by far the easiest thing to change. I, it's trivial for me to change the concentrations. So if I want CA to be high, And I want CA to be high in the case where if alpha 1 exceeds alpha 2, okay, so I want to maximize this ratio. If alpha 1 exceeds alpha 2, so in other words, my reaction rate for the desired expression is at a higher power than it is for the undesired, what sort of reactor should I use? actually be high. Near the end, CA will drop off. So I'll get good selectivity at the beginning and I'll get lower selectivity at the end. But overall, I will get higher selectivity on PFR than I do on a CSTR. Also, for the same reason as described here, I will get high selectivity in a batch reaction. Because in a batch reaction, I'll get very high CA initially with CA dropping off over time. Whereas the CSTR <coughs> operates at a steady state of low CA, and that's it in the story. So use a PFR or a batch reactor in this case when alpha 1 exceeds alpha 2. Another thing that you can do is to use, let's, let's put this refrain, refrain, uh, do the opposite. Uh, don't use, don't use inerts. So sometimes you can, uh, especially for gas phase reactions, you may have nitrogen in the system, that's an inert gas. But if I'm using inert gases, I'm effectively lowering the concentrations of my species. So by not using inerts, or if it's liquid phase systems, we kind of just use this name diluent, same thing, that dilutes the system. So don't use inerts if this is gas phase, or diluent is the terminology we use for liquid phase. Okay, so if you do those two things, you're pretty much going to maximize that concentration. Of the I'd like to think for next class what you'll do if alpha 1 is lower than alpha 2. And it's not just the opposite, there's a third extra thing you can actually do to improve the situation if alpha 1 is lower than alpha 2.